Hey, hey everybody. Hello, Facebook. Um, and hello, who's with me? Who's with me here? What's the ah Marie and Michelle? You're very welcome. Right. I think I must have switched your videos off. Oh, I didn't know I'd done that. Okay, I'll bring you on in a minute, ladies. And right, are we recording? Let's record this. Hello, everybody. Hello, Facebook. Hello to you with me here on Zoom. I am Vicky Blades, and today I'm talking about practical steps to get you more visible. You have to get more visible because you need to attract your clients, you need to increase your income, and you need to influence people. You need to have an impact in the world. You're here to share a message. Right. Uh, oh, I see. Did I not let people in? That's what the problem was. Everybody's in. Oh, I'm so sorry. Zoom uh, had an update. I don't know if anybody else has come across this, but uh, Zoom had an update for me anyway recently. And it's... Um, Sent me all a dither. All right. Okay. Wherever you are, however you're here, via Zoom, via Facebook, watching live, watching replay, you are most welcome. Okay. So I'm Vicky Blades. I'm your visibility strategist and your confidence coach. And I'm all about helping midlife women in business to be more visible, to be more confident, so they can share their really important message, attract their dream clients, and therefore accelerate their income, their impact, and their influence. Because believe you me, it is wealthy women that will change the world. Fact. So I'm here to help you 10x your visibility and your confidence so you can get out there and share your message. And today we're talking about practical steps to get more visible. So I've got a presentation for you. I'm going to be on for about half an hour. I'm going to try and keep it short, bite-sized, kind of lunchtime-ish. And uh, I'm going to be asking you some questions as well. If you're here with me live, whether you're on Zoom or whether you're on Facebook, I'd love to know, where are you watching from? And what's the weather like with you today? I know last time I had people from Australia and America and the UK and Europe and the weather was very different everywhere, I can tell you. So I'm in Madagascar and it is supposed to be summertime. It's actually quite cool by Madagascar standards for this time of year. So it's in the 20s, maybe up to 25. We're getting a lot of rain because it's rainy season. Um, occasionally the sun peaks out, but not so much. It is a little bit cloudy. Okay, we've got Marie in Northern Ireland and Michelle as well. Okay, and I'm guessing it's going to be a little bit. Uh, I see my messages now. That's so weird. I'm guessing it's going to be a little bit cold. Right, okay, I'm also trying to get my, uh, 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 I'm trying to, sorry, just bear with me, I'm having a look in the group, in the Facebook group to see if I've got any comments. Hi, Deborah, oh, from Madagascar. It is quite cold, isn't it? Okay, right. Oh, Judith is here, oh. Judith is Norfolk, England, and Spidey, still going strong, amazing. Thank you all for joining me. I'm glad I managed to see those comments in the end. Um, thank you. And thank you also for being here on Zoom. Okay, oh, it's been a while, but oh, I've got somebody from New York. Oh. Michelle, you can have your camera off for now because I'm going to do a little bit of a presentation. And then if you've got a question later on, we'll... Um, We'll unscreen you. That doesn't sound right. We'll put your video on and you're very welcome to ask me any questions. Oh, and we've got someone from America as well. I love this. Love it. Right. OK. I am apt to go on. So before I do anything 
too much chattering. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to do a presentation. So here we go. I hope I am screen sharing. That's right. How can I can I present? Yes, I can. OK, so hopefully you can see this. Thank you, Canva. I don't need I don't need any help there. OK, I'm going to go like that. So I want you to shine online to attract your dream clients. And today we're going to talk about some practical steps to get more visible. And we're going to keep this nice and short. So I'm going to rattle through my slides. What is it that holds us back from being more visible? And I guess I am referring mainly to online visibility. So things like showing up um, to training, um, hopping on um, coaching calls, posting, obviously, on social media platforms, making videos, going live, all of the things that we need to do to be more visible. What is it that we find so hard? Well, let's dig into that uh, to start with. What is it we're afraid of? What is it we think might happen? And who might be watching? Why does it matter? And what could they say about us? So these are some of the things that my clients have told me, that thoughts that run through their heads when they're thinking about posting on social media. So if you feel brave, why don't you pop in the comments or in the chat box what it is that you think you're afraid of when it comes to being more, more visible online. I call it visibility blocks. All the mind gremlins that come along and go, no, you can't do it cause X, Y, Z. What's the number one mind gremlin or visibility block that you have that holds you back from being more visible online? I'd love to know. Pop it in the comments, pop it in the chat box. Because I think we all have similar things that we're afraid of. But it comes down to this slide. It comes down to fear. It comes down to anxiety. And a lot of it is to do with being judged or having a perception that we will be judged. I remember one client I had quite a while ago now. She's quite young. I think she's starting a, new, uh, a beauty business. And I asked her, we talked about making videos. And she said, well, I can't make a video because um, my brother might be watching. And I said, and is he your ideal client? She said, no, he isn't. And I said, well, then you're going to have to find a way to get over your fear. And I understand probably she's had a lifetime of being teased by her brother and probably he's going to, you know, maybe mock her for making videos or going into business or whatever. But can't let that hold you back. You've got to talk to your clients. And your older brother is not your client. But that was her big fear. So tell me, what does it feel like to introduce yourself in an online networking meeting? Put a post on any social media platform or go live on social media. Oh. I would say these are the top three things that people come to me for help with. Um, dread, dread is what most people feel when they have to introduce themselves. <laughs> tell me in the comments if you want to, tell me how it feels to introduce yourself. A lot of it is to do with being lost for words, not really knowing, kind of not owning yourself in your business and also starting to chat and then realising that you've gone off on a tangent or you've gone into too much detail and then coming away and going, oh, but I didn't say the really important thing. Um, so an intro is full of expectation and dread quite often. I also have a client who ter was terrified to post on social media. When I said she had to post a minimum of three times a week, that was what we were working on at the time, she thought I was joking. She couldn't think that anybody would post three times a week on social media and wouldn't people just be sick of her and 
you know, <laughs> being on social media all the time. And, you know, I had to break the news to her that some people post on social media three times a day. Yes. And they all survived. Nobody died. Um, and going live on social media, this is a really interesting one because uh, most, I would say, all the people that I know that were scared of going live, once they've gone live, that's it. They love it. Probably it takes them two or three times and then that's it. They don't want to make recorded videos ever again. So, but these are the things that hold us back, that make us feel fearful and anxious. Tell me if any of these resonate with you, because this is what my clients tell me that they think. And this is what makes them feel sick, anxious, overwhelmed, cringy, and go into procrastination mode. They hate talking about themselves. And by extension, talking about their business, because often we're solopreneurs and we are our business. And particularly if you're any kind of coach, you definitely are your business because you're not making anything or manufacturing anything or selling a product. You are selling yourself. So people find that really difficult, talking about themselves, talking about their business, owning it, being proud of it, speaking about it with great enthusiasm and real, you know, I'm doing this to make a difference in the world. That's what we're aiming for. Lots of people get the ick <laughs> when it comes to making offers and asking for money. Oh, negotiating money is such a nightmare, isn't it? And that's something where confidence is really important. And I'll come on to how you can get more confident in a moment. It feels like showing off. We have been told societally, historically, ancestrally, that we're not to show off, that we're not to stand out, that we're not to put our heads above the parapet, that we're not to think we're special in any way. You mustn't blow your own trumpet. Oh my gosh. But there's a fine line, isn't there, between being proud of what you do and celebrating yourself and people thinking that you're showing off. Oh, this is a whole, whole area I could talk about all day. We're really worried about taking up people's time. I don't know why. <laughs> we're here to give them a service. We're here to help people. We're here to solve a problem for them. But somehow, some of my clients feel worried that they're taking up too much time. This comes back to taking up space as well. We're worried that we, you know, we're, we're taking up too much space. You know, we're not playing big. We want to be small. We want to hide. We want to be invisible. We want to be not a bother to anyone. And the other thing, and this is going back to the same client who was scared of posting on social media, um, being repetitive. I can't possibly post about my amazing offer, you know, more than once a month <laughs> or once a week because people are just going to think, oh, my God, there she goes again. And it's not true. Because so many people won't see your first post, won't see your second post. They might see your third post. They probably won't see your 34th post. And everybody is repetitive. If you think of all, let's think about people like Mel Robbins, Tony Robbins, Amy Porterfield, Marie Forleo. They post about the same thing over and over and over again. And has it done them any harm? Oh, but we are afraid of being repetitive. It's crazy, but true. Okay, so what's going on and what can you do about it? Well, again, it's that fear, it's anxiety. It's holding ourselves back, but it's doing ourselves a disservice and it's doing our clients a disservice too. I'm just going to very quickly see. If I've got any comments, where had it done? <laughs> oh, yes, I have. Okay, so yes, scared of who's watching and being judged. And they're not going to like what you're saying. They're going to think, they're going to tell you that you're wrong in some way. <laughs> and Michelle said, networking meeting. Uh, oh, yes, the assumption that you want something, that you're only there to sell, right? That's a biggie as well. 
good that you're clear on your niche and oh how to ask for referrals and how can I help them yes and the classic fear of making offers and uh, asking for money and I had some oh where's my where's it gone and Johanna says uh holding me back is who's going to be interested in me I get it yeah also why do they want to talk to me when actually they're buying my product? Um, that's a big one uh, for product-based businesses. And uh, I used to work a lot with product-based businesses. And the one thing they would say is, yeah, but I don't need to be on a video because it's not about me, it's about my product. And actually it's not because we buy from people. We don't buy from things. And we buy emotionally. And that's why it's really important that we connect with you, even if you are selling products. Thank you so much for all your comments. Oh, Julianne's joined us. Hello. Very welcome. And Judith, consistency. I know we've spoken about this before, right? But I think we're just human. You know, life is a bit up and down. Business is a bit up and down. Visibility, it's a bit up and down. So I think that's okay. Right, let's get on with some practical tips where yeah here we go share so uh oh no I've gone backwards okay so that's all the things that we think feel wrong so here are here are some of the mindset things you can do to get more visible. And we'll talk about more kind of concrete examples of visibility. But we all have a negativity bias. That's our safe spot. That's an evolutionary thing with our lizard brain that we remember terrible things. We remember bad experiences um, because we have to in order to survive. So it's very easy to start telling yourself a story say you've had a critical comment maybe on a post or you did a live and you didn't get an audience or something has led you to believe that you're not a great speaker or all of these things that will jump into your brain and stay there forever um and that is what your brain will remember rather than the fact that you gave a great presentation that you imparted some wisdom that you gave loads of value that you helped somebody that you showed up that you took time out of your day that you prepared all of the amazing things that you do your brain's just going to remember that one person who maybe said something you didn't like that's our negativity bias so be aware of that um as an actor, what we do, what we work a lot on, <laughs> like constantly, is turning fear into excitement because physiologically, we have the same feeling in our bodies. So all the things that make, um, that are symptoms of fear, like butterflies in the tummy and the shortness of breath and wobbly knees and all of those things, they are also symptoms of excitement. It's the same neural pathways in the brain, fear and excitement. And it's only your brain that decides whether it is fear that you're feeling or whether it's excitement. And so we, uh, in the acting world, work a lot, because obviously we get stage fright, doesn't matter how experienced you are, everybody gets stage fright. And it's being able to turn that around and make it into excitement and then use that energy and be curious at the same time. I think I've, have I spelled that right. No, that doesn't look right. Okay, yes, so developing curiosity is really important. And reminding yourself that you've actually done scary stuff before. And the thing is, posting on social media, writing a blog, making a video, going live, being more visible will not result in death. It won't. We're not surgeons. We're not rocket scientists. What we, again, in the acting world, say to each other as we're standing backstage or about to go on set and we're shaking like leaves at the thought of going on, we'll say to each other, no one's going to die. And it's true, isn't it? I um, have my brother-in-law is a fantastic speaker. He's done two <laughs> 
And I asked him, I said, what is it that helped you get over your fear of public speaking? Because again, that's something we all have. And he said, well, once I realized there were so many much worse things that could happen than me giving a slightly crap speech, I kind of just got over it. So think of that. It might feel like a mountain, but you've done hard stuff before. And at the end of it, no one's gonna die. Okay, recognizing your inner critic. The inner critic doesn't always speak the truth. Well, it feels like it does. And sometimes we've internalized that voice for so long. Oh, you're so rubbish. You know, your voice sounds awful. No one wants to look at you. You're overweight. That kind of constant critical voice that it's, it's almost like it's a part of us. But if you can step out and observe the inner critic and realize that those beliefs are not necessarily true, that might help you to get over some of that fear and anxiety as well. Oh, checking in on time here. Got loads to do, loads. Um, this, by the way, is a really short version of a masterclass that I'm running in a couple of weeks. So I will tell you more about that. Um, that is called 10X Your Visibility to Attract Your Dream Clients. And I go into some of this in much more detail. Um, there's an, at least two more slides on all the things that get in our way. Anyway, practical tips, practical tips, practical tips. You need to be visible. You know that. You need to make it easier for yourself. That's really important. If you're climbing a mountain every time you make a video or write a blog post, then it's time to have a rethink and a reframe. And you need to do it because you have to make sales. And making sales is all about making connections, people building the no like and trust factor. They're going to choose you over the next person who does exactly the same thing because they like you and they're connected to you. So visibility is super important. I would start with deciding what suits you. Where is your comfort zone? And I know we have to get out of our comfort zone and I know we have to challenge ourselves, but let me know in the comments if any of these listed here are in your comfort zone. Is this anything that you would be comfortable with? So, for example, I know people who love to go live and hate to make reels and hate to make videos. So lives is their comfort zone. I know other people who love being a podcast guest. Well, if you love being a podcast guest, that's fantastic visibility. So go out there and push yourself as a podcast guest in as many places as possible. Maybe you have a podcast and that's your comfort zone. Well, brilliant. Then you should promote that as much as humanly possible. Maybe you're best at in-person events and connecting with people, I don't know, from speaking on a stage or even going to networking meetings. Maybe that's your networking ninja. Or community, being part of a group, whether it's online or whether it's in real life. Maybe that's where you flourish. But all of these provide opportunities for visibility and therefore you should maximize them because that is the place where you will feel most comfortable and once you're comfortable in one space you can start to cast the net a little bit wider so you might write a blog post or you might go live talking about your blog post or you'll be happy to go to a networking meeting and point everybody to your lives or your podcast platforms i've written here because um we tend to have an affinity with one particular platform or use one platform more than another maybe you love youtube or facebook or instagram great well go and use that platform to you know its utmost ability for your own visibility so that's the place to start with to really really utilize your strengths and your most happy place online or in person and start then to experiment with other types of visibility or being visible in different places. And then I know, boring, isn't it? It's like prep. <laughs> I bang on about this all the time. But you do have to prepare a little bit and make a plan. If you make a plan, 
you're so much more likely to stick to it. And by make a plan, I don't know how you do it. Write it on a post-it note. Maybe you've got a diary or a fancy planner. Maybe you use Google calendars. That's me, by the way. But put it in your diary, put it on your post-it note and make sure that you give yourself time to prepare and to practice for whatever it is you're going to do, whether it's a podcast or writing a blog post or so much about content creation, which is a lot to do with visibility, is about giving yourself time to do it. Because, of course, we need to focus on connecting with our clients. We need to focus on the actual work. But setting aside time to write something really meaningful for your clients, setting aside time um, for a live, for showing up, you know, to do some training or some coaching. It's really, really important. Because apart from anything else, it's going to allow you to prepare. And when you're prepared... That makes life feel so much easier because you feel confident. Um, oh, I'm so glad. Michelle is very comfortable with anything video-based. Hurrah, me too. Um, I've just realised. <laughs> oh, Jane Fox is here as well. Hurrah. <laughs> yes. Um, I just realised that I haven't explained this picture on the slide. <laughs> and it's me being eaten by zombies. Because one of the places where you have to really prepare and really plan and really practice is on a film set. And I happen to, this is from uh, the premiere of a film I was in uh, called The Zombie Diaries. So I was going to make an analogy there about getting prepared. Obviously, actors prepare like anything, unless you're, you know, doing improv. That is the only place. And even then you do prepare, actually, because you have to prepare the structure of what you're doing. You don't just literally show up and do stuff. Um, stand up comedian, prepare like crazy. And like actors, they prepare so much. So it looks like they haven't prepared at all. Because once you've got that level of preparation, it looks effortless. Because it kind of is, because you've kind of done so much. The only thing left to do is to step on stage or is to step on a film set, or is to tell the funny joke. So prepping like a ninja helps you to take action, feel confident, and know that everything's in place. That all you have to do is shine online and be brilliant and be you, which is the magic that we all need to see in your business. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so Julianne's saying structure is so hard. I'm a pathological start all over again. You got it wrong, person. That sounds like a perfectionist, Julianne. Would you say that? Would you say you're a perfectionist? So one of the things I haven't gone into in this um, training is all the things that we do to avoid getting prepared and taking action, which is procrastination, perfectionism, avoidance, and... I think there's one more. I can't think what it is. But yes, these are all of the things, safety mechanisms. Exactly. This is what our brain wants us to do. Don't do the scary thing. Do the safe thing, which mainly involves sitting on the sofa and watching Netflix. Got it. OK, so that's a whole other training talking about how to get over that. OK, so this is what you can do to get out of your fearful state and to get on with it to get away from those safety mechanisms, to stop sitting on the sofa and watch Netflix instead of preparing your video or your podcast. The first thing is move. 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 Moving is changing your energetic state. And sometimes when we get paralyzed, I'm thinking of my son here, he's autistic and he often has meltdowns which is just when life gets too much and he gets overwhelmed and, and you know, the emotions are all there, you know, bursting out. Um, and he kind of gets paralysed by it. And I always say to him, move, you know, even if it's just walking across the room, even if it's just standing up when you're sitting down, just move, get yourself out of this head space and into your body. You can do that by yoga, by dancing, by going for a walk, obviously connecting with nature, fantastic. But it is important that you get out of your head 
And the best way of doing that is movement. I find yoga amazing for this. Um, but it also gives you headspace. And again, this is a whole other training, but I wrote a post the other day on the importance of rest and the magic effects it has on the brain. So I could talk about that all day as well. Second up, breathe. I know, sounds so straightforward because we breathe all the time, but take time to, oh, look at me, shoulders. I've just realized now because I said breathe, my shoulders have been really tense. So I'm going to breathe. Breathing gives you space, makes you slow down, calms your nervous system. Oh, sighing. Sometimes the emotions can get all clogged up in your chest and oh, sighing it out is a lovely way to get rid of some of that negativity and nerves okay and observe observe your thoughts observe the stories that you tell yourself um observe how you talk to yourself develop a bit of curiosity why is the inner critic always telling me that I can't do x y and z what is my go-to visibility block you know oh I hate the sound of my own voice what is going on what's the purpose of that so become an observer rather than getting tangled in the mind drama. Focus. Sounds really easy. <laughs> what I mean by focus is focusing externally, focusing outside of yourself. So much of what we do is all wrapped up here. And it's, again, coming back to what will they think? What if I get a negative comment? What if I'm being judged? What if I look fat? What if I stumble on my words? It's all up here. If you change your focus to your client, to the person that you're helping, to the dream of the, all the people that you want to help, the impact that you want to have in the world, if you realise that your message is so much bigger than you, that can sometimes help taking the focus off yourself. I have a client in Australia and she um, does um, training on child safety, training all around, you know, child abuse, sex abuse, online abuse, all of that. Um, and she makes videos constantly and she's on all the platforms because that's where her clients are, kids and parents. So she's on everything, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, you name it. And I asked her once, I said, so what, you know, you obviously are comfortable making videos. And she said, no, I hate it. And I was like, oh, really? You make like, you know, at least three a week. And she said, yeah, but my message is so much more important than the fact that I get nervous. So I do it anyway. And I just thought that was a beautiful perspective. Um, so get outside of yourself and focus on the message rather than um, yourself and what's going on. Um, the countdown, I don't know if you've heard about this, Mel Robbins wrote an entire book called The Five Second Rule. And it sometimes help, uh, helps uh, or helps some people some of the time. And it is that you literally count down. So you're paralysed on the sofa thinking, I've got to do that thing. I've got to do that thing. I've got to prepare my slides. I've got to go live. I've got to you know, talk to someone about selling a program whatever it is and you do a countdown literally you do five and, and you know that when it's time to go you move and you go five four three two one and you stand up and you walk towards whatever activity you've been avoiding and apparently quite magical she's written a book about it um and then flip it i'm going to go back to my client who was scared of posting on social media here. So one of the things that we talked about was she said, I hate asking for money. I hate telling people what I charge. And I really feel like I ought to offer this service for free. <laughs> I was like, okay, do you? Um, so we flipped it around. I said, okay, well, let's put you in this situation where you're going to talk to someone like yourself. You're going to ask for some coaching. And um, that person says to you, yeah, you know, it's $200. How do you feel? And she said, well, of course they're going to ask me for money. I would think it weird if they didn't. And I was like, right, now apply that logic to yourself. So sometimes flip the situation around and see how it works with yourself in the place of your client. 
that will work for some people as well. Okay, so that's it for my top tips. I'm just going to check on my time. Have I gone over? I probably have. Oh, I've gone a little bit over. Okay, so let me check. Let me stop checking. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my magnetic messaging um, mastermind in a moment. I'm just going to check my chat. Okay, so oh, we've got some comments here as well. Yeah, so Julianne says, focusing outside of your staff towards the audience. That's helpful. Good, thank you. And in a room full of people, uh, there are too many to focus on. Yes. Um, help, do, who do I speak to? Well, if you're in front of a camera, I always say you should imagine one person standing behind the camera. And it could be your best client, could be your best friend, could be your mum, could be someone you feel really comfortable with, but someone that you're going to enthusiastically share your message with. In a room full of people, if you're not comfortable meeting people's um, eyes, making eye contact, and that is something that usually comes kind of later on when you're really used to speaking, um, you can do two things, Julianne. You can focus slightly over everybody's heads or just focus on a spot at the back of the room. It is important not to let your eyes flit about because that is distracting for the audience. So pick a spot and focus on it. And as you become more practiced, you will be making eye contact. I don't know if I've answered your question there. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Um, da, 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 da. And, okay, yeah, dollars. Lots of people charging dollars as opposed to pounds. Euro as well, of course, is another one. Um, oh, thank you. I answered your question. Great. Uh, Michelle said, great question. Will I die from this? No, no, nobody's going to die. In fact, somebody might buy something from you. Hello. That would be the result we wanted. Um, yes. And oh, have you done a bit of improv? Oh, Michelle, we have to speak. Um, you are a person who likes to create a schedule. Great at setting it up. Not always great at execution. <laughs> We are the same, um, we should be in the same group, Michelle, because I was the one at school who did all those beautiful, do you remember like revision timetables with different colours? And I'm going to spend an hour on history and geography is going to be in blue. And oh my God, the most beautiful schedules you could ever imagine. And then completely did, never followed it, never. In fact, I'm fairly sure I've done a training on this and I'm fairly sure there's a video somewhere. Michelle, I'm going to go look for it and I'll post it in the group if I find it. Yes, I know I've spoken about this before for sure. OK. Oh, yes, Michelle, let's hop on a call. I have got a link that I'm going to tell you what, I'll put it in the group um, and we can hop on a call because I'm super nosy. I love to know all about people. So great. Let's schedule a call for sure. OK, I'm going to go back and share my final few slides now where I am just going to tell you very briefly about my magnetic mastermind, which I'm very excited about. So this is my first group program and I want to take a very small group. I want to take maximum five people, five women into the magnetic mastermind for six months and we're going to talk about getting visible, getting confident, getting clients, because that's what it's all about. You are the very first people I've ever told about this. I might have emailed some people about it. I can't remember. But I actually only decided on the name last night. So you're the very first people to hear about the magnetic mastermind. We want to magnetize magnetize clients our way and I've got so many tips and trainings to share the three main pillars of magnetic mastermind are going to be the powerful positioning of you in your business and why people come to you and not somebody else who's doing the same thing we're going to talk about magnetic messaging and that's because I love copywriting and I love making videos and that's all about obviously like being magnetic and a strategy to be more visible and connect with all your clients. That's the three main things we're going to talk about. But there's so much more. This month, 
it's 50% off. And if you are one of the first three joining me, that's all the three of his four, you get next to three months. So you get to be in the mastermind for nine months instead of six. I'm so excited. Let me know if you'd like more detail. Um, put 50, 50 in the comments or 50 in the chat and I will contact you with some more info. Copywriting you need, Julianne. It's my favourite thing. It's my favourite thing, copywriting. I honestly love it. Have you seen um, the Copy Cure on Fridays? If you have a bit of text, if you have a post, if you have something that you're struggling with, please come along and um, share it on Friday and I will very happily take a look for you. I am just writing insane amounts of uh, content at the moment and loving it. So, Michelle, this is what you need to hop on, this um, free breakthrough call. The link isn't below. I haven't, I haven't done that. <laughs> so prepared. I will put the link below this, obviously, because it's going to be in the guide section in the group and I will post the link. If any of you want to hop on a call, honestly, I love, love to find out about you and your business. And I will definitely give you at least one concrete action step that you can take straight away to improve your visibility, to magnetize your message or to put a strategy in place for connecting with clients and being more visible. Oh, yay, great. Yes, Julianne, Copyright Fridays. Go and have a look in the guides. There's a big explanatory video and post. Does anybody have any questions before we go? Yes, we're gonna chat anyway, exactly, of course we are. Um, have I got another slide? I'm just gonna check. Oh, this final one is just... <laughs> I've moved all the content that was in my group over to my YouTube channel. So if there's anything you want, there's loads of playlists. There's over 100 videos on there, all about video marketing, visibility, mindset issues. It's all there. There's, there's one about the inner critic. There's one about why visibility is hard. There's tons of information. All you have to do is look for at Vicky Blades. And if you do head over to YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. I would love it if you did that. Right, everybody, how are we doing? I am going to wrap up and just double check. Oh, stop the share. I always forget to do that. Always forget to do that. Stop the share. Just double check. Oh, I'm going to put the link in the uh, Facebook uh, comments and I'm going to do that right after I finish up here so I would love any of you to book in with me for a chat to get to know each other and if there's anything I can help you with it's not a sales call it's literally a connection call because I love to do that love to connect and I'm super nosy <laughs> okay I can't see any more questions uh Seems to have gone backwards on my comments. That's a bit weird. Uh, uh, oh, no. Oh, seems to have gone backwards on my comments. Oh, that's a bit weird. Uh, oh. Okay. Right. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I know I rattled through that information. As I said, there's the masterclass coming up where I'm going to expand on some of these areas and I'll be posting that is on the oh I should know the 20, 23rd of February I think I think it's a Thursday but I will be posting details um which digs you know really deep into um being more visible so that you can connect with more clients and I am going to be doing weekly trainings here in the group as well next week we're going to do camera confidence 101 so if that's something that you're interested in, look out for next Wednesday's live training at the same time in this group, Camera Confidence 101. Have, uh, yes, yes at the same time, absolutely, yes. So every Wednesday at this time, I don't even know what time it is with you, Michelle. Um, I feel like it ought to be the middle of the night or something in New York. Um, <laughs> I'm quite good on time zones, but oh, 7.30 a.m. God love you for joining us. I hope you've got a coffee. 
Okay, the start time was 7.30. Right, well, I'm going to let you go now and start your day. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys um, back in Norfolk and London and Northern Ireland. And all of you watching on replay, please put hashtag replay so that I know how this is being consumed and hit me up with any questions, just tag me. And don't forget, book that free call as well. Take care, folks. Have a great rest of your day.